There we go. So I think I'm recording now. Um, so if people are watching on replay, welcome to you as well. Good morning. Good morning. I am Marion. I am a teacher first and foremost. So um, uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to share some wisdom with you today. I can see Pascal, Angelica, um, Sharina, is that right? And Jana, nice to see you. So how this is going to work is basically, it is a bit of a talk. It's not really a lesson. Like usually when I'm teaching children and we're much more interactive, I'm going to share with you as much information as I can in um, within about 40 minutes um, about the 11 plus. Okay, so if you are doing the 11 plus, if your child, if you're thinking about your child doing the 11 plus, then you're in the right place, basically. Um, I'm going to share with you what the 11 plus is, what the biggest challenges we face as parents and teachers um, as we sort of look down the barrel of the next couple of years to get your child through these exams so that they can get a place at an independent or a grammar school. OK, so that's the big picture. Then we're going to come a little bit more narrow and we're going to talk about how you as parents can support your children at home. So I'm going to share with you uh, my top tips, but also books and websites and things that hopefully will make you feel a little bit more knowledgeable and give you a little bit more confidence in actually supporting your children at home. OK, and um, then I shall tell you about our Confident Learners Mastery course, which um, is, well, I'll tell you about it towards the end, but it's um, it's a very exciting new project. So you probably saw an email <clears throat> about the fact that we're teaming up with Atom Learning um, we currently run courses, but the new thing is that Atom Learning have come on board and they are um, working with us as, as well. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. So we've got a, a information packed session. Um, <laughs> we've got an autopilot taking notes. Again, this is a new one for me, Apana, but you're welcome. Um, let me just let a couple more people in and then we'll get cracking. Lovely to see you all this morning on a Friday morning nearly the weekend, hope everybody's well. So um, whilst I get my screen share up, would you be kind enough to share with me what year your child is in, in the chat, if you possibly can. I'm hoping most of you are in year four, but um, let me know if you are not in year four as well. Um, you might be in year five, you might be in year three, year four, year four, year five. Okay, there's a couple of year fives. Now, just to be absolutely clear on this, We'll, I'll explain more in a second, but the year fives, um, if you're just starting preparation for grammar schools, you're quite late. OK, but I will explain that in a second. So stick around and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, year fours, you're in exactly the right place. Let's get going. So it's great that you are here. Thank you for letting me know. Brilliant. OK, so as I said, how to pass the 11 plus exams for grammar and independent schools. So. First of all, what is the 11 plus? Now, some of you may know and some of you may not have a clue. So I'm just going to go through it very quickly. It is it is, a, it is an exam that only grammar and independent schools ask children to sit as a selection process to offer them a place. OK. So it's competitive and it's challenging because those schools, grammar schools and independent schools, want to cream off the brightest, most able children to go to their schools. That's what it is. It is as simple as that, okay? It's an exam that um, it stretches children, it challenges children. It is supposed to, This it's, it's supposed to cover the whole of the Key Stage 2 curriculum, which is years three, four, five, and six, okay? But in my experience, a lot of those exams actually contain some of the year seven curriculum, okay? and they go deep into the year six curriculum. So there's a lot of advanced knowledge that your child needs to know, right? They also examine not just maths and English, which are obviously top subjects that your children learn at school, but they also examine these other two subjects, which are verbal and non-verbal reasoning. Most schools do, some don't, more on that later. But verbal and non-verbal reasoning are, um, not taught in state schools. If your child's at a private school now, they might be receiving lessons in these subjects, but they're not taught on the national curriculum. So therefore, our first big challenge as parents and teachers is that not only do we have to introduce two totally new subjects, but we also have to ensure that our children are covering the curriculum 
from year four, five, six, and a little bit of seven before the exams. Now those exams for grammar schools are in September of year six, all right? I say that again, September of year six. So straight after the summer holidays and at, right at the beginning of their year six. So they haven't had a chance to do the learning at school that they need for those exams. Does that make sense? They're being examined on things that they haven't yet been taught, which is a little bit bonkers, but that is the way it is, right? So that's our biggest challenge is making sure that our children have actually covered the curriculum they need to be able to sit these exams with confidence and pass. Okay, because those are exams are those exams are right at the beginning of year six. For independent schools, they are a little bit later. They're in November or January, but they're still quite early on in year six. All right. So there you go. That's the biggest challenge. And the pass mark is another challenge because as we go um, year by year by year, and I've been doing this for several years, about, I mean, I'll tell you more in a sec, but I've been teaching for a long time. And the more we go, the, every year, the number of children applying for grammar schools, and I'll just say grammar schools for now, grammar schools gets bigger. The number of children applying gets bigger, but the number of grammar schools remains the same and they remain the same size. So obviously the competition gets greater year on year. And so when people say to me, what is the pass mark? Well, it depends. It depends on the year. It depends on the other children in the, in, that are taking the cohort, if you like, the other candidates, what they score. It depends on the school. Some schools, um, in grammar schools, for example, you might have a consortium of schools. So, for example, where I live in Kent, um, we've got the Kent test and every child does the Kent test. But that test may give you access to about 16 different schools. But depending on how you score, um, different schools will offer you a place. So Skinner's, for example, is a very competitive school. And so you have to score very highly to get a place there. Whereas there may be other schools that you don't have to score so highly. OK, that's just one example of, of, a, of an area. All right. Um, independent schools, again, different schools will have a different pass mark. They'll be looking for different things. Um, so it's not easy to say, oh, well, you have if you get 85 percent or above, then you've got a place at a grammar school. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. There's all sorts of other things that they take into account as well, such as how close you live to the school, whether or not there are siblings, whether there's pupil premium. All these things will also affect whether or not you get offered a place. So pass mark is a very kind of ambiguous statement, really. But that said, the competition is huge and they want the very best children. So you need to make sure that your child is getting at least 80, if not 85, 90 percent in those exams to be in with a chance. They can be they can pass the test, but still not be offered a place. OK, so it is a bit of a funny system um, and it is something that we support our parents, our clients with um, because it is a bit of a funny system. But I just want you to be aware of just how challenging these grammar school exams are, okay? Your child will need to, I, I plucked some numbers. These are very general, but generally there's around 500 applicants for only about a hundred places, okay? So there's, that means that 80% of children who take that exam won't get into the school that they want to. 20% will, and we want your child to be in that top 20%, okay? So um, are there any questions on that so far? Um, does that make sense? I know it's it seems like a little, I can't see any in the comments, but it does seem like a, um, a pretty brutal system. And I'd agree with you, it is a brutal system, but it is the way it is. Um, and what we can do as parents and teachers is try to understand that system and help our children to sort of navigate through it with the least amount of stress and boredom and worry and anxiety as possible okay so we just got to kind of go with it and make the best of it so that's the big picture then if you're thinking well is this for me is this for my child can can my child do this which is a question i get asked a lot is this is my child do you think he's good enough the simple fact is that anybody can apply anybody can have a go 
Okay, and I'm going to talk to you shortly about the process of preparing for the 11 plus, all right? Because not every child needs to apply. Just to be absolutely clear on that, the um, the compulsory exams in this country for state school children are the um, SATs exams, which take place later on in year six in May. Okay. Um, but these ones are not compulsory. You have to choose to do these and they're only to get into these schools. Um, because very few will pass, we don't want to put every child through this experience, right? But for some children who are bright and able at the moment, they're doing well at school, then it can be an extremely beneficial process to do the preparation for the 11 plus, right? Um, now, bright and able children, how do you know that your child is bright and able? If you look at the school reports or you've spoken to the teachers, you might have heard this word expected level. And it's a bit of a binary way of um, categorizing children. There's the expected level. If your child is at or above expected level, then they're doing well at school. If they are at greater depth, they're doing very well at school and likely to respond well to some extra learning being extra challenged, being stretched um, in 11 plus preparation. However, I have to be honest and say, if your child is below expected level or working towards expected level, then your time might be better spent now focusing on getting them up to expected level with the national curriculum. Okay, they may not be ready yet for that extended curriculum. As I said, we have to go fast, we have to cover a lot of extra stuff so that they can actually pass the exam in September. All right, so there is extra learning that's needed and, and a lot of extra time and effort. And if your child is currently below expected level, then you really need to focus on the classroom curriculum and getting them up to expected level in the classroom. But those children who are above or at greater depth, then they are the kind of children who will respond well to some extra tuition, some extra learning, some, um, maybe a little bit more homework and you, you might have got some books and be doing some of those at home, okay? They might well respond well. It's also important that um, you as a parent, um, and, and you're here, which shows me that you are willing um, and, and determined and you want the best for your child, but you have to be willing to put in a bit of time and effort as well, okay? These, these, these exams are tough, as I said, and we and there's a lot more than the national curriculum that you need to learn. And so there is you do have to put in time and effort as a parent as well. OK, um, and it helps if your child has a positive growth mindset and they want to better themselves. Now, I've I've worked with literally thousands of children and every child is different, so I can't possibly generalize. But um, I find that the ones that do well in these exams are the ones who actually quite enjoy their learning I, they're quite willing to sit down and do their homework they enjoy reading um, they are keen to do well all right they've got this positive growth, growth mindset they want to better themselves they want to do well if your child is one of the children who would probably rather be watching television outside doing everything else and everything but schoolwork then you might have a bit, a bit of a battle on your hands to get them to do this extra work. It's not impossible because at Confident Learners, that's what we're all about, is building this growth mindset. So you can change a mindset, but I just want you to be aware that it's harder if your child is not already working quite well. Now, obviously, you value education and you can see the lifelong benefits that an excellent education can give you for your child. And that is really important because I want you to think about the bigger picture here not just this exam. We are talking about what this exam, what the preparation for this exam can do for your child, right? I'll talk about that later, but just think about the big picture, GCSEs, A-levels, professional qualifications, universities, all of that. Where does that journey start? Where do those study skills start? Where does that confidence in their own abilities begin? It begins right now in year four or year five. OK, so that's the big picture. Um, quick introduction of who I am, <coughs> which feels a bit random sort of putting it in here. But I just wanted to um, prove to you that I'm not a random off the Facebook um, of Facebook. And uh, if you've been sort of following me or in my world, I'm not terribly good at social media. So 
um, I'm a bit old school, uh, but I have been teaching for an awfully long time, well over 20 years now. Um, my I do sometimes teach in the classroom. I sort of do some cover work and things, both um, sort of usually actually at a prep school in Kenya. Um, but my most recent full-time teaching post was here in the UK in London, and I was head of a London prep school. Um, and then since then, I have uh, been working, well, I set up Confident Learners and we work with a small team. There's about six of us. We're all qualified and experienced teachers who still teach in schools and um, we specialize in help, helping children pass the 11 plus exams. My background's independent schools, we, but we cover all the grammar schools all over the country. And um, and my a lot of my teachers have experience of well, they, all the ones that teach the 11 plus have experience of teaching 11 plus throughout the country, okay? Various different places and uh, and online. Okay, so that's that's me and that's what I do. Uh, we have lots of lovely, very happy clients and children. This one with a circle down here is from a child um, who this child actually got into a grammar school in Gloucestershire. Um, this is Skinner's, which is one of our Kent ones around where I am. Seven Oaks School is an independent school. Um, this is more Gloucestershire ones and um, London schools, all sorts. Eton, Harrow, Radley, um, Bolton, Withington, Ibstock Place. That's where I was head there in London. Um, some independent schools here and Kent Academy, several grammars and things there as well. OK, so basically we help children get into schools across the country. Now, enough about me. How do you talk to your child about the 11 plus? So as I said, we were doing the big picture, like what is it generally? And is it right for your child? Now, if you've decided that it is right for your child and you are pretty determined as a parent to get your child prepared for these exams so that they can get into a grammar or an independent school, it's really important that your child is on board with your decision. What we don't want is that clash when your child is saying, actually, none of my friends are going to that school. They're all going to the school down the road. And I want to go down to the school down the road with my friends. Why am I doing all this extra work? I don't understand. I do school work. I'm doing fine at school. I don't need to do extra work. All of these things can um, <laughs> create a little bit of a clash between parents and children. So you need them on board. So first of all, think about why you are doing this as a parent? Why do you want this for your child, right? And then does your child know why they are studying for this? Have that conversation and do they also want to succeed? So your why might well be as a parent, <coughs> oh, excuse me, you want to give your child the best opportunities. And loads of parents say that to me, I want to give them loads of opportunities. What does that mean? What does that mean giving your child opportunities? OK, now some suggestions, this might not be for you exactly, but some just some some suggestions might be that you want your child to learn in an environment with other bright, hardworking, ambitious students. Now, if they're currently in a school where there's a large class, maybe 30 odd kids and your child is amongst the top performers in that class, they might be feeling a little bit bored. They might not be challenged. That poor teacher, huge respect to all teachers, obviously, but that poor teacher has to focus on um, the children with uh, who are less able, the children with with um, special educational needs, uh, the children, all sorts of um, behavioural problems that might might be going on for her or him in that classroom. And your child, who's a good hard worker and doing well, who just sits there completes the work, not getting the attention that he or she needs. Okay, not being challenged, not being stretched. If you go to a selective school that class becomes a group of children who are exactly like your child. They're bright, they're hardworking, they're ambitious. It's no longer uncool to put your hand up and answer a question, okay? Doing well is what they will strive to do. And that's a really important thing to bear in mind with these schools, okay? So your child might not be reaching their full potential currently, and you don't want them to coast in middle gear. What are they truly capable of? You're probably sitting there thinking, well, I know my kid's bright, but he's not, you know, he's not showing it. He's not showing it on paper. The, the teacher doesn't recognize it. It's he's not, it's it's in there, but it's not coming out. And you need to have some, you you, you want to get that good teaching, you want to get that that environment in which your child can really shine. Okay. 
And as I said, the big picture, education leads to good universities, good jobs in the future. Okay, And you know that your child is capable of great things and you want to open the doors for them. So that, for me, is opportunities. You could also talk about things like facilities. Some of these schools have amazing facilities. They have sports, sports facilities, drama facilities, art, art rooms, technology rooms, all those kind of things. Okay, so lots and lots of positives of going to some of these schools. But for me, it's about the people that you're with as well. Okay, so that's your big why. Now have the conversation with your child, okay? Speak to them about it. Mention all these things I've just talked about here. Talk about that, why you're doing it for them, why you want them to do it, but then involve them in the process. Now I speak to a lot of parents who make this their own decision. And particularly when I was head of a school, I used to talk to parents, I'd say, well, where does he want to go? Have you spoken to him about it? Have you, have you taken him to the open days? And they go, no. Well, yes, it is your decision at the end of the day. But if you've got your child involved in the process and you've spoken to other current parents and other children, then they will be more determined to come. Like, just an example. Like I got an email from a mum yesterday who said um, I actually taught her older child and now she's come back for her younger child. And she said, um, we went to go and see the school together and he's determined to get in. Now, that is what you need. OK, he, to, to a child who's eight or nine, ten years old, a school is just a name and they don't they don't really know what it is. They don't their their world is blinkered. They're, they're in primary school. They don't think about what's going on in the future. You need to open them up to that potential, show them other schools, show them options so that they're not just like sheep and follow all their friends to the local school down the road. OK, and once they see that school and they decide that they want to go there, then they'll be a lot easier to get them to work and to prepare and to 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 do what's necessary to get in okay um oh priyanka yes i shall i've seen your message it's a nice long one i'll come back to you is that all right no problem um so and then this is just like a list of tips so praising the effort and not the result this is very important and it's a top teaching tip actually and a lot of parents unfortunately make the mistake of telling their children how brilliant their work is all the time even from a small age when your three-year-old comes up to you with a drawing of the dog so oh, that's amazing that's brilliant that's fantastic you're amazing child then believes that they are amazing and doesn't always strive to get better yeah they're what i call um mediocre they they believe that whatever I do is brilliant because my parents just tell me I'm brilliant all the time. What we need to do as educators is praise the effort. So that little picture of a dog, of a, of a three-year-old, I might say, oh, I love the way that you've colored in and you've kept really tidy, tidy coloring and you've not gone over the lines. But look, why don't we see if we can draw a background and make this dog in a park or let put some trees around it or something. So you're always praising the effort and then the result can always be that little bit better. OK, now that encourages a growth mindset. When you translate that three year old's picture into 11 plus studies, we're looking at um, a piece of writing and we might say, OK, so you've done really well. You've tried really hard with your paragraphs. Those are so much better than last time. And your handwriting is super neat. Well done. You've tried brilliantly with that. What I'd love to see next time is some sentence openers. And look, these sentences, this sentence is just, they're all the same length. So why don't we try and play around with having some short sentences and some longer sentences? See how that affects the writing, okay? Can you see how that will encourage an already brilliant child to excel? Yeah, because I go, oh yeah, okay. I feel good because I've been praised. I've, I, I know, you know, that my teacher or my, my parent has, has seen that I've done well, but I know that I can do better. And that's growth mindset. OK, so that's getting your child on board as well. That is about how to help them become the best version of themselves. OK, so. Also, when you're doing this with your child, and this is what I touched on earlier, it is not all about the exam. Now, this is where I think I differ from a lot of other 11 plus tutoring people, um, because I'm all about education. 
and not just the 11 plus. Okay, now education for me is not just knowing your English and maths and being able to, like a robot, complete an exam to a certain level. Okay, this is about the process and the journey as much as it is about the final destination. All right. Yes, it would be amazing if your child passes that exam and gets into one of those schools. Brilliant. But if they have done the process from now onwards, from year four through to year five, we'll talk about the timeline in a second. Um, if they've done that process, they are way above their school peers. All right. Not just academically, but they've got confidence and study skills that will last a lifetime. So they'll be able to take that into their secondary schools for their GCSEs, for their A-levels, for their university qualifications, and onto the pre their professionals. And some of you will be very aware that you're still doing exams in your 30s when you're a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or whatever, okay? So um, those study skills and confidence that they learn by doing this extra 11 plus studies will last a lifetime, all right? And as a parent, we have to balance that and a teacher, we have to balance that quite carefully with not knocking the confidence. Now, it's very easy to pressurize a child at this stage. Okay? And I've seen it happen over and over again. If we pressurize children, put that pressure on, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to pass, you've got to pass. That child will eventually collapse and they will become they will refuse basically and they say no i'm not doing it and i've seen that happen um but they also and this is sort of even more detrimental than anything really they believe they're not good enough if they don't pass they believe they're not good enough and that is the opposite of what we're trying to achieve with this okay so we have to ensure that the child knows that whilst passing into that dream school would be amazing the, the alternative is not failure that their process what they're doing is what we're proud of OK, that is the achievement. That is the success. The cherry on the top is the 11 plus exam. All right. Little anecdote for you. Um, one of my children last year passed the Kent test, got into the grammar schools, cho chose not to go to the grammar schools because actually the school that they that was nearest to them was a really good school and she was really happy going there. She is flying now in year seven. OK, absolutely flying academically in all the sports teams, doing brilliantly at the local school, having passed the grammar school exams. All right. So that's a classic example of how just doing it was what she needed. OK, now she's top of the class and she's doing brilliantly. OK, let me carry on because I'm aware that time is going on. So how can you help your child at home? So this is sort of. As I said, now you've spoken to your child about it, you're all on board, you're going to do it. How do you do it? So first of all, do not assume that school will teach you everything in time. As I said at the beginning, for those of you that might be late or, or and just to, to recap on that, the exams are in September uh, of year six. So, but it includes the curriculum that the child is about to learn in year six. So when you're doing 11 plus preparation, what we have to do is do teach the whole of the year four, five, and six curriculum before the end of year five, okay? So timing is crucial and school won't do that for you. So you do have to do some extra work, either with a tutor or at home. Do seek professional advice. Okay, there's lots of us out there who can help you. Um, don't rely on Facebook, uh, what I call playground, playground chit chat. You will hear a lot of mistruths. You will hear a lot of scaremongering. Oh, we've done this and I've heard the pass marks for that. 98% for that. And my child didn't get into this. And my child, we live in this postcode. And the, this question came up on that paper. Please speak to the professionals. We're the ones that have been doing it for quite a long time. We see the papers. We, well, we don't see the exact papers that, that, they, that they get at schools, but we've done a lot of experience of working with children towards these papers. We know the kind of children that do well. We know the kind of children that struggle. Okay, seek professional advice. The best websites that I use, um, and you can just hop on these and look things up. They've also got loads of freebies, are exam, paper, exam papers plus, but they sell exam papers as well. They're quite expensive. They've got loads of information on individual schools. So if you're going for Henrietta Barnett's school and you're not sure which exam board it is or 
what the catchment area is or when you need to apply, go on Exam Papers Plus and that'll give you all the websites you need, okay, and all the information. Same with Atom Learning. Now, as I said at the beginning, yes, I work with Atom Learning. They are partnering me with, um, with this next upcoming course. Atom Learning is one of my favorites. It's the leading online 11 plus platform, okay? Not teaching teaching platform, but it's, an, it's a sort of self-study platform, if you like. I'll tell you about it in a sec. But there's loads of free information on there as well, like reading lists and blogs and school information, all sorts of things on there. Go to those websites, loads of info. Now, timelines starting early. Those of you that are in year four, now is the perfect time to start. So I want you to imagine you're climbing up Mount Everest and you can take the, the gentle climb. Okay, we all get to the summit, but we take the gentle climb. Or you can take the other side, which is a really steep climb. Now, starting the beginning of year five is possible, and we do do it, but it's it's a lot steeper climb. Because if you start in year five, you've got to cover all of year five and year six before about May, end of May of year five. So you've got about, hold on, September, October, November, December, January. There's nine months to do two years of school. If you start now, you've got a bit of a head start because what we can do for these next sort of six or six months or so of year four, right up until the end of August, is we can we can start, um, we can ensure those foundations are there, first of all, make sure those foundations are strong. And then we can start the year five curriculum. So when you get into the year five curriculum, you when you get into year five, you're actually ahead of year five and you, you can already start learning the year six curriculum, you see. Okay, now those of you that are in year five, I did see at the beginning, there's a few of you who are in year five right now. It's, if you're just starting right now and you haven't done any extra work or tuition or study at home um, until this point, your exams are in September, that is an enormous ask, okay? Your child has a very small amount of time, six months or so, to do two years work and all the exam practice. In our courses, we aim to finish our curriculum at the end of May of year five, and then we have June, July, and August, three months of exam preparation before the exams, right? So they've learned everything they need to know well in advance so we can practice that exam technique get the speed and the accuracy up and running okay so year four now is a good time we actually start some of our courses at the beginning of year four as well and we do the full two years all right so now's a good time these boards know your board gl cscc you've probably heard of gl that's the most common commonly used um grammar school paper at the moment cssc is a um essex consortium future schools Another grammar school, one that only a few schools use, CEM, the, used to be used um, for written papers. They now do much more online, um, the, SEM, the CEM Select, and ISCB is the independent schools. Again, they do different, they do an online pretest, but they also do um, written papers, and some schools do their own. So different boards, different papers, some do creative writing, some don't, some have, um, some grammar schools will have a GL round one, stage one, and then if you pass that, you're invited back for stage two, which will be a written paper and include some creative writing. So it's important to know which schools you're going for and therefore which boards you're doing. Again, we help with that. Um, but once you've worked all of that out as a parent at home, you can create a structured plan using a detailed curriculum, which I'm gonna send you the maths and English curriculum so that you can see that but you need to know how much time you've got and what you need to learn, okay? That's the information you need. Once you've got that, you can put it into a kind of like weekly blocks of exactly what you're going to learn each week. Please do not just say, oh, well, we're working through a CGP book. We've got some like, oh, here we go, 10 minute tests, word problems, 10 minute tests. We've got a CGP book um, and we're just working through it. We're practicing that. That's not a structured plan. That is kind of, Put a blindfold on and throw a few darts at the board and see what happens. You need a structured plan, okay? Um, and then when you are using the books to be structured about it, use structured books that help you teach. Now, I think you can see me. If you can't, let me know. Um, but 
if you can see me, I'm just going to show you a couple of books. So I use these books. I would suggest these books. OK, can you see that? Let me know if you can't see it. Um, practice book, practice book, not a word problems book. These small word problems books have all sorts of topics in them that your child might not have learned yet. So you're setting them up to fail by setting doing those. If you're working through books, use some of these books, which are like practice books, because they are, um, <laughs> that's a word problems book. Uh, right, so for example, you've been learning about time at home. Your last lesson was on time. You've gone through it with your child. Now you want them to practice some questions on time. Here are the specific questions on time. Okay, they're not all jumbled up by topics. There's also some assessments in there, which are quite good. So CGP, definitely a good one. You've probably all heard of those. Um, and the ones we use in our courses are called Galore Park. And they look like this. This one is a Galore Park book. It's like actually a, a textbook, like we would have had at school, you know, there's comprehension and there's speaking, well, there's comprehension and there's also grammar. That one's on pronouns. This is a year four book. We've got year five books as well punctuation so there's everything in one book it's a teaching book rather than just a workbook so a lot more value for money in that and then finally the um first past the post and this is sort of a little bit further on than year four this is my we might use this in year five but again it's all done by topic so you have a topic that is this is averages and representing data but what i love about these books they're all 11 plus questions but this is beginner level intermediate level and then you have an advanced level as well so you can do one page as you're learning and then a second page as revision and then when you're doing exam practice in year five in the summer holidays you do your advanced level okay so those are my suggestions you can of course buy there's all they're all very good so this one i know that's another galore park one they, there's loads of them but i was just going to show you yeah like bond books a lot of you will have come across bond books also very good um, I find they, funnily enough, I find they don't go far enough, really. Um, and some of the other books, like the Letts and the Collins books, also good, but you will find that, pulling out those ones, you will find that they are um, not that great money, a value for money, to be totally honest. I find they are um, a little bit skinny and there's not enough information in the books you just don't get loads of questions sorry i'm looking terribly disorder i spend a lot of time teaching myself so i'm afraid my um my books are a bit all over the place all over the place but yeah i've got hundreds of them and those are my favorites okay oh are we all still with me quick check in see how we're doing oh what's that oh that's otter pilots doing i wonder what no that was Right, okay, so how to help your child at home. Next slide, so make time and plan ahead. Now, a lot of people, as I said, making planning ahead is really important, okay? Children thrive with a routine. What I suggest you do is create a timetable each week showing when you and what you are going to study this week, plan ahead, and make your child part of that planning, okay? Now, my experience of being a teacher, we put the timetable on the board every morning and if there's a slight change to it and I've been a year four teacher year five teacher year six year seven year eight I've done it doesn't matter how old they are if there's a slight change to that timetable Miss McDonald, why haven't we got maths this morning well this morning we're going to do a play rehearsal instead of maths <gasps> uh, panic and then behavior goes and the routine's gone and uh, <laughs> children just don't respond to that very well so even when you're at home just like you have football practice as a set time on a Saturday morning, I want you to make sure that your 11 plus practice is a set time each week. Whether you have lessons with a professional or not, whether you're doing it at home or, or otherwise, then please make sure, right, so on a Tuesday afternoon, we're going to get home, you're going to have half an hour of free time, have a snack, watch some telly, whatever, then we're going to do an hour of maths. And then we're going to do our homework, okay? Please make sure it a part of your study routine all right just like you have as i say just like you've got a piano lesson on a certain day make sure that you've got time in the diary for this because otherwise i promise you you're going to get to sunday and go oh gosh we haven't done any 11 plus stuff this week all right it's really important and you've got there's a lot to cover 
and you've got to just stick at it. Slow but steady wins the race a little bit often, little and often, little and often. If you don't do anything and panic, so like if you're in year five and starting now going, oh, I've got four months, six months to do it all, you've got a much steeper mountain to climb. OK, so that's the 11 plus and how you can help at home. If I introduce you to the Confident Learners methodology, that's my little company. If I introduce you to how we do it, you might also be able to take away some of our um, teaching pedagogy, as we call it. OK, how we actually teach them. Um, Pascal, was it the first past the post book? Yes, anything from first past the post I quite like just because they are in topics, as I say, in topics. So when you've learnt, you know, if you've learnt about probability, you can do a chapter on probability. It's just, for me, that's the way I would teach. And I think um, that's the best way to do it. Uh, this one's a maths word problems. There's all sorts though. I think I've got a different one. That's mental arithmetic. Um, and the English ones are very good as well. But you go on Amazon and honestly, you could you could spend thousands just on books and plenty of parents have stacks and stacks and stacks of books. Well, you can't do them all, can you? So anyway, right. So our method of confident learners, two takes. Um, is we don't just teach, OK? Teaching is part of it. Um, but what you have to do when you're educating a child is right, realize that actually mindset is the sort of backbone of any child's success. If your child is willing to try, then they are likely to succeed. If they don't try, they won't. It's as simple as that, okay? So we have to teach children to be happy with trying. I've got a little sign saying it's okay to make mistakes. But we do that through every single lesson and you as a parent need to do that as well. OK, I can tell you how to model um, mindset, positive growth mindset. Like, for example, if you've heard your well, I'll come to that in a sec. But um, mindset is really important. The environment is also super important. A child will not thrive if they are not happy and feel safe and confident in their environment, if they're if they you might have come across this, and I'm sorry if you have, but at school, you know, if there's somebody else in the class that is making their life a bit miserable, if the teacher doesn't understand them or isn't teaching them in a way that they understand, yeah, all of these things can create a negative, um, a negative feeling about their about their learning. But we want children to learn in a fun, safe, and productive working environment with other children who are doing the same thing. Climbing Mount Everest, we're doing it in a group. We would never go and do it by ourselves. We do it in a group of people who are doing the same thing. And your child, if they are thinking of going to one of these selected schools, if they're currently in a state school, they're maybe not, um, they might be the only person, the only child in that class who's doing all this extra work. And that, why am I doing all this extra work? I don't want to do it. My friends don't have to do it. They're all out doing nothing. Yeah, so it's important. The teaching, I've put it in the middle because it's like the jam in the sandwich. It is the it is important. Um, and it teaching is not something that um, you know, it's 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 something that I personally feel quite strongly that it needs to be done by an ex experienced teacher, a qualified experienced teacher. Okay. I'm sure you all remember those dark days of lockdown when you were trying to teach your child at home. And a few parents loved it, a small minority of parents loved it and found it easy, but I would say most children, most parents found it really difficult. And a lot of children find it difficult to learn from their parents. However brilliant you are as a teacher, even teachers teaching their own children find it difficult. It's that relationship shift, okay? So I, I think we have to have all of these things in place for your child to succeed, teaching environment and mindset. Now, if your child has ever said, I'm rubbish at maths or I hate reading or I can't do this. They might have even thrown a book across the room. That is a negative fixed mindset. Now, fixed mindset is the flip side of growth mindset um, coined by a lady called Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K, who's an American psychologist. Do Google her. She's fascinating. I was trained by her about 10 years ago in a school I was working at. Um, specifically with to with her with in relation to children and their mindset okay if you can't do something yet 
just that little word can change a child's mindset, all right? There's a lot more to it than that. Uh, it goes a lot deeper than that, but yet it's really important. So if you do one thing for your child, please introduce that word yet. I can't do it yet. I don't know my eight times tables yet, okay? Because that Im it immediately says, I can't do it yet, but I will if I try. Okay, so just try and introduce some of that at home. That will really, really help because children only can because they think they can at the end of the day. Um, and we want to instill that confidence in every single child. And you can do that at home as well. Okay. Um, make sure you're not being negative at home as well. As adults and the way we learned when we were at school, we can be guilty of having quite a fixed mindset and saying something like, oh, well, I was also rubbish at school. I wasn't very good at maths at school either, so it's fine. Or don't ask me, I haven't got a clue. I, 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 was, I was always terrible at that too. Or um, Yeah, whereas we could say, oh, actually, I find that really difficult as well. Do you think I could learn? Can you show me? Can we learn together? Yeah, those kind of things really, really help. The environment, as I mentioned before, healthy competition is important. I'm not um, so modern that I don't think that competition is not important. If one child can answer the question, then your child might be thinking, oh, hold on a second. I didn't say that or I, I, I was about to give that answer. I really want to go first. That's what children do naturally. Okay, And that eagerness, that that willingness to try is what we're looking for. OK. Support and affirmation, that's, that comes from, from um, parents and from teachers. Our teachers are all incredibly positive, very, um, very supportive, uh, and will help every child as much as they possibly can, okay? Um, so we teach in live small groups, all right? This is, this is what we do. We teach in live online small groups. They're interactive. OK, but during those lessons, because they're being taught by an experienced teacher, every single child is included. Every single lesson covers, um, builds that mindset and confidence. Um, not explicitly. We don't sit down and talk about mindset and confidence. We might do sometimes. We don't do that in every lesson. We do that through the way we teach our children. OK, that's really important. But then for the year fours, we would... We, we start with the foundations. We make sure that that year four course, the curriculum is 100% solidified in year four, and then we build on that. So we might be teaching a lesson on fractions. So as you know, there's a, a, lots of different lessons on fractions, lots to learn, but we start with what the fractions are, equivalent fractions. That's a year, year four um, learning objective. Once we've established that a child can definitely do equivalent fractions, we might go on to mixed numbers and improper fractions. And only then will we extend them onto the year five curriculum, and we will, can do this when they're ready, is the adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Okay, so by the, the, and then they might revisit the fractions in year five and start doing some 11 plus questions. So they're absolutely ready, but the foundations are important. You can't multiply and divide fractions unless you can do equivalent fractions, okay? So it all works like that. And then there is the acceleration. We do have to go through the curriculum at speed um, effectively so that they are at that point in time for the exams at the, at the summit of Mount Everest at exactly the right time. If you peak too early, then they get bored and they fall back down the mountain. If you don't peak, if, if you don't get there soon enough, obviously there'll be a last minute panic and it'll be a bit of a disaster. So we need to get them there at the right time. Okay, well ahead of year six. So our courses, now, as I said, this is a really exciting time because we are just starting a brand new course for year four. Um, our We are currently running year five and year four classes um, and have been since September. So our existing courses are going to carry on, but we're starting a brand new course for year four children on the 8th of April. So that's straight after the Easter holidays. Okay, and every week, our little group of year fours will get one hour of maths and one hour of English every week. Now they're on Tuesdays and Thursdays, at 
Um, we do include nonverbal reasoning with our maths lessons and we do include verbal reasoning with our English lessons. OK, so um, this is what is, is provided. But we also. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you I'll show you how it works, because we have a portal and there's loads there's loads of resources and things inside the portal. But we're also teaming up with Atom Learning, who, as I mentioned before, are uh, the leading online 11 plus platform providers that just I'll show you some of it in a minute give you a little sneak peek into the background of that but we're teaming up with them so that you have the lessons with us and then the homework and the assessment and things will be done by them and we can monitor it through um we link so that if I was teaching your child I link into little Johnny little Johnny's um atom learning I set him homework depending on which will be adaptive it's just brilliant I'll show you so let me show you the Confident Learner Student Portal first, um, because every every lesson has its own objectives, resources, and homework. And there's extra resources for those that want to do a bit of extra work, and then there's replays. Now, because we're online, one of the beauties of being online is that you can do it from anywhere, um, but sometimes you might miss a lesson, um, or you might just want to go back and revise it. Um, and go over it again, and the replays are there, which you don't get in face-to-face -face lessons. Let me just show you what our portal looks like. Now, bear with me, because I have only just started doing this in our um, in our little chats, and I want to sh I want to show you it. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen again. So this is the current course, actually. So this is what we're learning. This is the year four maths portal obviously there's a maths one there's an English one now this is the current year fours because obviously the the one that's starting on the 8th of April hasn't started yet so this is the current one we go so there's all sorts of information here loads of resources and I did all these little videos during lockdown for parents um but there's they're just 10 minutes of me teaching mixed numbers so if you want to go back and look at you know, can't remember what how to work out the area of square and squares and rectangles. You pop back there. Can't work out. Can't remember what, how to, what the perimeter of two D shapes is. So you've got ten minutes there. Brilliant for parents as well, but really useful. Anyway, those are all just free resources that are in the portal, and they'll be in the portal for our next course as well. Then we have some extra resources in here for practice, and then our modules start. So our first module was written methods for operations for the four operations. So as I say, this is all the way back in October, September, October. Let me show you. There's the nonverbal reasoning. So we did some nonverbal there. Um, so let's just choose a lesson randomly. Oh, no, those are the replays. My apologies. Those are the video replays of the teachers teaching them. Let's go right. Equivalent fractions. That was in February. Inside each lesson is other lesson objectives. The homework is clearly printed, is clearly there. And at the moment, we have files for people to download. This is where it's going to change because instead of having your homework as files where you have to print it off, do the homework, send it back to us, we have to print it, mark it, scan it, send it back to you. We are now going to be setting our homework on Atom Learning, which is phenomenal. And I'm going to show you that now as well. So that's the Confident Learners portal. Sheila is the one that's going to be teaching this new group and she's been teaching for 20 years. Okay. And, um, and she's a mum and she's just a lovely, lovely lady. So she's that's Sheila. She's going to be doing our, our new group in April. Let me now show you what the Atom Learning Portal looks like. Um, now, inside Atom Learning, this is I've they've given me a demo student. So this is my demo student. Um, let's just come out of there. I just want to show you what happens. So this is the learning for Jason. OK, so this is his kind of dashboard. He's got a to do list. Now, there would be homework or exam practice or whatever in the if, if we set homework that would come up in the to do list. Um, so there would be specific homework for him to do based on the lesson that we've just done. So if we just done the equivalent fractions lesson, we would set Jason equivalent fractions homework in here. It would be here for him to do. Um, it would look like this. Uh, hold, hold on. I'll show you. Oh, here, practices. 
Okay, so this is this is how we set it. So I'd set a custom practice, maths, um, fractions, equivalent fractions. So he'd get some equivalent fractions. We'd start the practice and the questions look like this. So they're kind of multiple choice, which fits brilliantly with pretty much all exams these days. A load of them are multiple choice. So you have these kind of questions. You might go like that, check answer. Oh, that was a fluke. I literally did that as a fluke. Let me see if I can get one wrong and show you what happens. Um, can't, uh, how many ice creams is that in total? Let's get that wrong. Now, then you get the explanation as the answer. You can watch a video and read a help sheet for the answer. So you've got instant marking, instant feedback, instant support. Okay, so that is the kind of homework that you will be getting. And then um, you can also, that's that's how we work with the Atom. So Jason would be getting his work from us, but then you also have access to the, um, to the personalized learning journeys as they call them. So you'd go into a learning journey. Now, Jason will be different from Tara, who will be different from George, but Jason's will adapt to Jason's knowledge. So he will do, he's, he's in Metropolis land. He's, he's going to start ordering and comparing. If he does well in order and compare, he'll be able to go on to the next, the next. So again, more questions there. Hints are available as well. Um, if he does well in that, he this number two will be the next learning objective after order and compare if he doesn't do brilliantly and he needs more practice this will be more ordering and comparing until he gets good at it that's what adaptive means it means it is reacting to that particular child's ability level okay and their understanding so those are um that's how atom works they then have um you can view it as a parent as well they then have review your progress. So this is all the feedback. Now, obviously, this is my my demo child, but you would have um, how far they're doing, how, how well they're doing in all the different subjects. Science is in there because very few schools do science as well. But you can then look on here and I can look on here as well and see exactly how your child is doing with each so for example plurals it would say good or needs practice um punctuation you might say see that he can like commas he can do and apostrophes he can do because they both say good but you know that he needs to practice direct and reported speech because it says needs practice so you click on that and then you can start a practice in that selected area okay so it's very it's it's tailored to your child and every single bit of data will be in there um Obviously, this is, as I say, demo, but there's videos and help sheets for each subject. So you can geometry, measurement, number, ratio and proportion. All of it is there. Then we have the tests. Now, this is where Atom come into their own, because the level that we work at in year four, you get two free tests a month. I don't recommend them until you've actually learned a lot of it. But this is brilliant for year five because there's all the mock tests, ISEB, that's the independent school ones. The grammar school entry tests, you've got the Bexley tests, all of these grammar school tests, and they change every time. So if you're doing the CSSE ones for Essex, it could, it's a non-adaptive test, this one, um, but they're different. So what it means when they're non-adaptive, it means that they're, the, they're a steady level of difficulty throughout, but they change each time. So you might do this one this week. Um, two mock tests retaining. I'm, I'm not going to go into that because um, this is just a demo student, but can you see how many millions there are? Lots of GL papers here. I've also got all the GL papers that the GL people provide anyway, so I share that with our, with our students anyway. But look, thousands and thousands. So that is what Atom does, and that is how it works with our children, which I think uh, I'm, I'm so excited about it. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, and we are working very, very closely with them to uh, to be like amongst the first in the country. Well, I think actually, I, I think I'm right in saying the first in the country to to be using Atom Learning as a sort of classroom support as well. So let me just um, share, go back to my little presentation. Where are we? 
Share screen. There we go. Okay, so that's that. Um, and that's all set on, on Atom. The homework is set on Atom. All you need to do as a parent is facilitate it. So make sure that they've got a computer, make sure they've logged in, make sure they've got pen, pen and paper for the lessons, make sure they're doing their reading and their spellings and their times tables and things. All of that is kind of homework, if you like, like parent, <laughs> parent responsibility. The rest of it we do, okay? So a little bit more on Atom there, um, unlimited mock tests, that's in year five, but it's unlimited. We have two detailed feedback, suggest, suggested practice, um, learning journeys, all of that, okay? So look, I'll just whiz through these because I've actually shown you. So this is, his, this is George and he has these tests to do and he has to practice some sequences because his teacher set him some on that. All right, so that's, that's, what, that's how it works. It replicates exam styles, um, it tells you where you've gone wrong. Oh, and this is really interesting screen actually, because it shows you, this is when they do the test. So this child did a Henrietta Barnett school first round entrance test. And you can see that um, it will be a she because it's a girl's school, but this is verbal reasoning. Vocabulary and finding words are pretty good, but reordering need to practice that. So immediate feedback and you can go in and set practice on the weakest areas from this mock test. So you can practice those weak zones which I think is just brilliant. And we're looking for this is a standardized age score. Um, that's a bit of teacher jargon, but you're looking for to get up to around about 120, 125 for those. Okay. All of this we can help you with um, as well. So we do do exam preparation, obviously not now in year four. We wait until the children have learned everything they need to know. And then we do exam prep through year five. We cover all the boards. We make sure that we tailor your exam preparation in year five through the summer. That is tailored to the schools that your child is applying to. Okay, we don't, we, I, I'm like my current year fives, fives I'm, at the moment I've got getting all their information from parents. I'm putting together help sheets, application processes, which exams to, which exams to practice and things. Okay. Um, just to note that we do run all the way through the holidays as well. So we don't take any time off apart from at Christmas, which you've just missed, but um, we go from now all the way through to the end of August and then the year five course will continue after that. So um, yeah, pretty comprehensive. There we go. So this amazing little partnership is, is um, very exciting and I think going to be a huge success. So a um, little bit more detail for you there. Any questions on this? We are um, just going through like, so there's one lesson, just to remind you, one lesson of maths, one lesson of English, and those are not taught on Atom. Just to be absolutely clear, those are proper taught lessons with our own resources, teachers, children interacting with the teacher. They're not just doing it on a computer program. They are learning interactive lessons with a the teacher. They then go away and do their independent work on Atom, okay? So, Basically, we want to give you your child, we want to build your child's confidence so they can attack their 11 plus exam papers and give them a fundamental understanding of the core foundations of maths and English way beyond that, which they would learn in a classroom. And we want to get them feeling positive and excited about learning. And I can tell you the feedback that we have from our parents that are currently with us is, is brilliant every time. Like I just had a message yesterday from somebody who's just joined us, is actually joining the um, this little group as well, but he's joined a month early. So he's in our current group. Uh, long story but mum wrote to say he loved it he's really excited about it like they love the lessons and that's really important for me if you pass the cherry if you pass the exam that is the cherry on the top that is what we are striving for but please remember that it's about about the um attitude to learning it's about the process and all of that will help you in the future okay so Let's go through investment for you of like what this might look like for you if you were to join us. Now, obviously, it's a it's it's a pretty um, all encompassing package. All right. We work on a monthly um, monthly subscription basis for our teaching. Um, and on that basis, if you're getting eight eight lessons a week, this has actually worked out on th two, three lessons a week. But if you had two lessons a week. Um, that would be £80 a week if you were working with an average tutor, times four would be 320 right? 
Now, um, our year fives have three lessons a week. So we go up to, we have a support session as well. So that's why that's on here. Um, but teaching's unregulated, tutoring is unregulated, should I say. You don't have to be qualified, but we all are. And we are all experienced. So obviously our prices are a little bit higher. You might be looking at, well, our fees start at 50 pounds per hour. You can go up to 70 pounds per hour for a good tutor. So we can provide you with those amazing tutors who charge 50, 60 pounds an hour for just 240 pounds a month of our teaching. Okay. Now that is the confident learners package, but we are now introducing um, Atom Learning. And Atom Learning has three different levels. This one here in the middle is the one that we're going to be using for year four because it gives you two online mocks per month, whereas the exam prep plus is the year five one. And we don't usually recommend that until the, towards the last few months of year five, you get unlimited mock tests. But this one here is 60 pounds a month, right? Now, we are going to give you a discount on that. And that discount is 33% discount which is pretty incredible and you won't get it anywhere else. So you get your Atom Learning for 40 pounds per month, okay, instead of 60 pounds per month. That's a whole third off the price. <coughs> we link in, you have your own login, so you can do your own thing with the learning journeys, but we link in with your child's um, portal so that we can set work, mark work, look on there. You know, we work together with you in there, but it's 40 pounds a month. Okay, so that is on top of the confident learner's tuition. So altogether, that's £280 per month for everything. All right. So it's it's a it's a fantastic package, if you like. It's it's, it's huge, um, huge amount of resources, huge amount of experience, huge amount of professionalism, all in one place, okay, with guidance, with support and everything. So I hope that uh, you are as excited about that as I am. And But at the end of the day, it's your choice. It's up to you. If you want to embrace the challenge and go for it, you want to give your child the very best education available um, so that they can go on to the future, not just 11 plus, but they can go on to GCSEs and A-levels, et cetera. You might want to do it yourself, absolutely, but you might also feel that you would appreciate and benefit from the guidance and support and expert teaching of trained, experienced teachers, okay? with the very best learning platform in the country so that you know that your child is learning everything they need to know in the right way at the right time and enjoying it children love atom learning honestly i have used it for years now alongside my one-to-one tutees um not in the groups but in my one-to-ones and so i'm very experienced at using it and from from that experience i know that children love it okay so this is not the first time i've worked with atom learning i've been working with them for years they it's a really, I mean, kids love being on, online, don't they? So the fact that they've got it there, they just click on a button and then there's a help sheet. They can understand that they've got the explanation right there if they get stuck. It is a fantastic learning platform. And the course itself that we deliver is, um, you know, obviously we've been running this as well. This is not the first time we've done this either. So this is a little bit of feedback from one of the parents from last year. Um We've done all the hard work for you. We do all the teaching, but we also do all the planning and the preparation. And we, you know, we we make sure that everything is as it should be, um, time-wise, but also appropriate for your child. Okay. And if there's any problems, be it they need a little bit of extra support in a topic, we help you out with that. If they're flying and they need a bit of extra um challenge and stretch in a subject, then we'll then we'll help with that as well. Okay. So if there are any questions, um, I'm sorry, I have gone over my hour and I do apologize for that. It's because I wanted to tell you all about Atom because I'm so excited. But if you've got questions, please do jump in now. And thank you all very much for joining me. Um, I'll stop the share. I saw one question pop up there. Um, okay, so Pascal asked about the price. Uh, Sharida, you're more than welcome. Um, is there another, there was another comment. Somebody's just commented and, oh, somebody put their hand up. Sorry, Angelica, sorry. I had the pleasure. Hi. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I knew there was Hello. a pop. I didn't know it was a message or a <laughs> hand up. How can I help? Yes, hi. It was just a question with, if, do we ex, we, we go through the, yeah, the, the process that we signed with you. We, we do need to do the extra work with the books 
on top of the two? Do you recommend that or do we kind of... Question. Good, very good question. Um, Atom learning and our teaching should be enough. However, they can't do creative writing on Atom learning. So creative writing is something that comes up in independent school exams and in some grammar school exams, not in the GL exams. We do teach it on our course because I believe that it's actually a really important skill for children to um, develop before they get into secondary school. So we do teach it on our course. Um, so creative writing is something that they have to do manually, if you like, not on a computer. But in terms of whether or not you would be using these books, mm -hmm. um, you, every little helps at the end of the day and so yeah you might be in a situation where you don't have a computer and so you, you want to have a go on the books and yeah you want to do some do some actual writing in a book that would be helpful but everything you need is in atom learning like apart okay. from creative writing all right so everything you need is there but then it's just up to you whether your child responds well to the computer whether or not Maybe you want to sort of have some quiet time and not be on a screen and you want to do half an hour, slightly different style of questions. Um, actually, on that style of questions, the atom learning is all multiple choice. And so sometimes you might want to go and do some short answer questions, um, especially if we're doing independent school um, or yeah, independent school or own papers where they have to actually write out the answer to a comprehension mm. question. They might need to practice that rather than just doing it as sort of pick a pick an option on a multiple choice. All right, does that help okay. a little bit? Yes, Angelica? yes, thank now? you. Mm -hmm. Priyanka, okay. can you please recommend some good NVR practice books? Yes, I can recommend some NVR practice books. I love, um, that's maths, I've got, I wish, <laughs> if you could see my, the, the library I've got here, it's um, extensive, so these ones, the ones, as I say, teaching books. So these are the ones we use in our in our courses. We use the ones called revision, complete revision and practice because it actually shows you how to do it. So for example, codes, horizontal codes are ones that they find really tricky. We teach it in our lessons, but you can do it at home if you read these books. Okay, I'm gonna send these out to you, but these are the best ones. And then Galore Park are also very good. Um, those are these ones. Okay, that's an eight to nine year old book, but it's 11 plus and pre-test book. These are also great because they also show you how to do it. So, yeah, so you've got a whole chapter here on matching features and you start easy and it shows you how to do it. And then you practice here. This is exactly what you should be doing for year four, actually going through here. And then you've got some trickier ones here. So that's the Galore Park ones. Looks like that Galore Park. Okay. Um, I said, Nyla, I'm so glad you, you enjoyed it and you found it informative. I'm aware that I've bombarded you with information and I talk very fast. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, the days of the week, just so you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.45 with Sheila, who's lovely. Um, I'm going to pop you an email later on this afternoon, which will have the replay of today's session. If you'd like to share it with anybody. Um, and it will also have the books that I've suggested and it will have the curriculum that you need to know for maths and English, okay? Um, and I'll pop the link if you'd like to join as well. But bear in mind that we only have 10 children in the class so and we've only got this one class to start with. So if you'd like to join, please let me know. It doesn't start till the 8th of April, but if you get your name down, then you've got your place and um, we can get you set up with everything and ready to go in April, okay? We may have other groups, depends, haven't quite sorted that out yet, but I'm excited about it and I'd love to see some of you there. Okay, any other questions? Um, I'm going to go now and not take up any more of your time. I could talk all day, but I will leave you and enjoy the rest of your Friday, enjoy your weekend. And if you've got any questions, just send me an email. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. Take care, bye.